My name is William Kevin Innes, and I'm a victim of criminal judicial corruption. I was endeavoring to promote a currency that was made out of pure silver, pure gold, and later on pure copper. There was also pure platinum that was distinctly different than anything else that had been used, and went to the police shortly after I uh, became enthusiastic about promoting it actively in the community, talked to them, they checked with the Secret Service uh, in, in the intervening time which I made an appointment and actually showed up for the appointment, they checked in with the Secret Service, they said, you're not breaking any law, we can't endorse what you're doing, but uh, I don't think it'll work, but hey, you're free to do that, you're not breaking any laws. Great, not an endorsement, but I was just wanted to have uh, be on the up and up with local authorities and make sure everything was fine. And since that time, they sent out a circular and I talked with also the Buncombe County Sheriff and uh, all various precincts chief and every policeman I saw on the street. I say, hey, check this out. Here's a pure silver piece that I'm promoting in this area. Have you read your circular yet? And now I seem to recall there was a circular. Well, uh, after Two, three years, this was in 2004, uh, shortly after was an article in the local paper. Interesting enough, very shortly after that, there was an F I discovered later, there was an FBI investigation into the use of the, a alternative form of currency. Well, in 2007, there was a U.S. Mint warning saying that these pieces, which are large, and this, they would said $10 at the time. We don't use $10 pieces. Uh, we don't use $20 pieces. We don't use $50. Our typical currency of the U.S. Mint is dimes, nickels, quarters. Maybe dollar, but not $20 or $10. And on the other side, there's all of these are distinctly different than anything else that's being used with its own uh, federally registered mint mark on it. It is not similar to U.S. currency in the legal term called similitude. This is distinctly different so that, and it's heavy. So the first thing you'd, I did was drop them in their hands. Look at how different it is. Well, in 2007, there was a U.S. Mint warning saying, the use of the Liberty dollar as legal tender can land you five years in jail and a $10,000 fine. You're right, but we don't use them as legal tender. Legal tender is that which is sanctioned by the government Coin is a special term that refers to uh, silver and gold pieces of a certain purity and weight that's made by the government and put into circulation as money. These are not made by the government. These are distinctly different, and, uh, but they are put into circulation as uh, money in a barter form. So, after uh, in, two years later, I was arrested. For what? Counterfeiting. Counterfeiting, well, in 2007, they had 100 copper pieces that were confiscated, saying they look too much like regular money. What planet is the FBI on? Copper? A dollar? So, at, they offered me various pleas, and uh, the, the first initial charge was 45 years in jail for counterfeiting. My goodness. And then after, I said, no, I'm, uh, this is crazy. I'm going to go to, I'm going to trial. So, after six months, they offered me 14 months. Very nice, a big drop from 45 years. Only problem is I'd be lying. And I'm not gonna lie to uh, make a deal with the devil. So two months later, I've been in jail for eight months. They offered me a six month plea. I'm still not taking it. Because I'd still be lying. I'm not going to have a felony for something that you obviously know from a five year undercover operation, FBI, thank you that you know darn well that there was no intention to defraud anyone, especially when I'd been on the local media, been to the police, the radio stations, the newspaper, did all I could locally to let everyone know it was every intent to have these not be used as legal tender, but to be used as a form of transaction between people. Well, two weeks before trial, they offered me a $300 fine. No moral turpitude, which just means there was no intention from the get-go of me intentionally wanting to defraud anyone. That I could agree to. I was all ready to go to trial to confront my accusers because that would have been my first opportunity. But I thought, what if I win? Then what? They get it. They're not very good losers. And if I had gone to trial and won, 
what would the repercussions have been then? A $300 fine with no felony and a claim on their part that what I was using in their eyes looked too much like the regular money that we use every day. That's their claim. That's not my claim. And that there was no uh, permission asked by any authority to actually use it. There's no process to get any uh, um, approval for the use of any other currency. So uh, the upshot of it is that if you did a criminal background check, it wouldn't even show up. Uh, I'm free to do other things in my life now. And I discovered that as a result of sticking up for my rights, I feel good about myself. And the biggest thing is that people know whose side I'm on. I'm for standing up for freedom and justice and for us taking accountability of our own lives and being bold about it. It's time to discover the fearless part of ourselves that's going to do the right thing regardless of the obstacles. In uh, a town in either California or Oregon where they do the kinetic sculpture race, they have an alternative form of currency. It's very successful. Uh, I don't know what it looks like, but I guess are there a number of places where there, there are alternative forms of currency? There's uh, alternative forms of currency all across the United States. During the Depression, when they withdrew currency from circulation, people were scrambling to find some way to interact in honest ways. And so there was over 600 that we know of, different forms of currency, credit voucher systems, time dollars that were used to keep the flow of commerce amongst communities going, to support local. The whole intent was to keep have a currency that did not go into the banking system, did not go to corporations, did not go to government, because they choose not to accept it. Fine, let's just keep money moving in our own community that's got some intrinsic value, that as prices go up, it goes up in value too. And that's the same with other of these currencies that are based upon labor, based upon some intrinsic res some resources within the community. They continue to have more value as, uh, we encounter difficulties of distribution systems breaking down, strikes, international problems. It's good to know where your products and services come from so that they are accountable and you're accountable. Let's have a more accountable society. And it'll be more peaceful as a result. And you spent eight months in jail? Before they offered me a six-month plea and I refused. I had to wait another year and a half almost, before they offered me something that I felt I would not be lying if I agreed to. I'd like to get a sound back from you that says, uh, I spent eight months in jail. I spent 23 months in jail. Oh, 23 months. It was after eight months, it was, I spent 23 months in jail waiting on what ended up to be a $300 fine. Now was there a mistake made? I think so. You knew from the get-go from the five-year undercover operation, you can't both be good undercover agents, uh, highly paid, and spend over five hundred, half a million dollars on all of things concerned, and not know there was no intention for me to defraud anyone. This is completely on the up and up, and uh, and then off, and then offer me a, have me twenty-three months in jail for that, and and then have a three hundred dollar fine because that's the upshot of it, they recognized that there was no, no intention to defraud. And you have no criminal record as a result? I have a petty offense. A petty offense. Petty offense. It's not even a misdemeanor. It's a federal parking ticket. And uh, you talk, did you talk to Secret Service or to Treasury or before, who did you talk to originally? Well, originally I just went to the, my local police. I went to the people that I felt were accountable to their community. The local uh, uh, public relations officer, uh, I don't know whether I should name names, uh, local police officer, who was at the time was public relations officer, and the local county sheriff's office. And they said, well, the chief deputy said, hey, 